Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In previous videos, we talked about Clostridium botulinum, the four types of botulism. Today, we'll talk about how to diagnose and how to treat botulism. Clostridium botulinum is a bacteria, so you will hear about antibiotics today. It produces toxins. You'll hear about antitoxins today. It can lead to wound botulism. You will hear of surgical debridement today. With that said, now let's get started. As you know, Clostridium tetany inhibits GABA release. That's why it's a spastic paralysis, because GABA is inhibitory. Inhibition of inhibition is excitation. But Clostridium botulinum decreases the release of acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is important for muscle contraction. No acetylcholine, no muscle contraction, i.e. flaccid paralysis. For maximum understanding and retention, please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Clostridium botulinum is a gram-positive rod, spore-forming, anaerobic, yet motile. Do they make spores? Absolutely. Functions of spores, protection of the bacteria against heat, chemicals, and enzymes. Here's the classic definition of clostridia. Clostridia are everywhere around you. Clostridia produce toxins, spores, and they can grow even when oxygen is absent, i.e. anaerobic. Clostridium botulinum releases a neurotoxin which inhibits acetylcholine release which causes flaccid paralysis. We talked about Clostridium botulinum in previous videos. Please pause and review. Don't forget that it colonizes your gut. And don't forget that the toxin is a heat labile. The paralysis is descending and flaccid versus Guillain-Barre, where the paralysis is still flaccid, yet it is ascending. Here's a lovely comparison table between tetanus toxin and botulinum toxin. Please pause and review. Don't forget, we are inhibiting release of GABA with tetanus, but we're inhibiting the release of acetylcholine with botulinum. The cause of death is the same. Botulinum toxin is an exotoxin. It's a classic A-B toxin, as we have discussed before. The A subunit is active. Active to do what? It has enzyme activity. It has zinc metalloprotease, which breaks down proteins, such as your snare proteins, particularly SNAP25 protein, which is part of the snare family. Without snares, you are unable to release acetylcholine. No acetylcholine, no muscle contraction. Therefore, ptosis, diplopia, constipation, descending, symmetrical, bilateral, flaccid paralysis, floppy baby syndrome, weak cry, hypotonia, etc., etc., etc. We have four types of botulism, as we have discussed before. Foodborne botulism, infant botulism, wound botulism, and inhalation botulism. Foodborne botulism was discussed in the last video. We have botulism or botulinum neurotoxin ingested orally thanks to improperly canned food or improperly canned or improperly prepared who made fresh vegetables and fruits that were not refrigerated properly. At room temperature, bacteria will grow and multiply and produce all kinds of toxin. Symptoms are flaccid paralysis. Diagnosis is clinical. Try to find the toxin in the serum or the toxin in the food. Treatment is equine or horse serum heptavalent botulism antitoxin to neutralize the botulinum neurotoxin and bowel emptying to get rid of the bacteria and the toxin. You can do this via gastric lavage and via antibiotics, which get rid of the bio bacteria. And when you get rid of the bacteria, you will prevent them from making new toxin in the future. What does the word bovine mean? It means cows. How about swine, pigs? How about equine, horse? How about canine, dogs? Number two, infant botulism. I ingested spores from honey or soil or dust. Boom, into the gut. Boom, proliferation, especially in infants because they have no competition from other gut bacteria, unlike adults. Symptoms hover around the floppy baby syndrome. Diagnosis, clinically, confirm it by finding the toxin or the spore in the stool of the infant. Treatment, not with equine, but with human-derived botulism immune globulin to neutralize the toxin. Because with foodborne botulism, there is competition of other bacteria 
with the Clostridium botulinum in the gut of adults, it's very hard to culture the organism in the stool of adults. But can I detect the organism in the stool of infants? Yes, indeed, because there is almost no competition. Because the guts of infants are relatively sterile. Wound botulism, how can I diagnose it? History, physical exam, and you can culture the wound. Or you can try to identify and demonstrate the presence of the botulinum neurotoxin in the wound. Treatment-wise, if we're talking toxin, give me an antitoxin. If we're talking open wound, surgical debridement. If we're talking secondary bacteria infection, antibiotics. Inhalation botulism is always a threat in the future. How can I diagnose botulism? All right, the things that will work out of these five things that we use for almost any bacteria is culture and identification. Culture the bacteria, identify the toxin. What's the name of the bacteria? Clostridium botulinum. What's the name of the toxin? Botulinum neurotoxin, also known as Botox, not to be confused with your gluteus maximus. How can I culture the bacteria on nutritionally enriched anaerobic media? How can I demonstrate and identify the toxin? You will need mouse bioassay. Basically, you are injecting the toxin and the antitoxin into a mouse. If you notice that when you injected the toxin, the mouse deteriorated, but later when you added the antitoxin, the mouse health improved, this is diagnostic that the toxin and the antitoxin are matching. And you do the test using two mice. One is used as control. Diagnosis of botulism. Identify the toxin and culture the bacteria. Where can I get the sample of which I can see the toxin? Serum, stool, the vomit, uh, the stomach acid, or the suspicious food, such as the improperly canned food. To demonstrate the presence of the toxin, you will need the mouse bioassay. This test is not available in most labs around the globe. Where can I culture the bacteria? You get your sample from the feces, if we're talking infant botulism, or the wound, if we're talking wound botulism. You cannot culture foodborne botulism on nutritionally enriched anaerobic medium. Because prevention is better than cure. How can I prevent botulism? Get rid of the toxin. How can I do this? Heat your food for 10 minutes to a degree between 60 and 100 degrees Celsius. The most potent human toxin on the face of the earth cannot withstand your cooking for 10 minutes. Just think about that and be grateful. Okay, medicosis, this is how I destroy the toxin. But can I destroy the spore? You, as an individual, uh, practically you cannot do it. Now, some specialized labs might be able to do it, but you do not have an autoclave at home. All right, medicosis, if I cannot destroy the spore, can I at least prevent its formation? Yes, you can, by refrigerating your food or putting your food in an acidic medium. Acid and cool temperature will prevent the formation of the spore. But leaving your homemade carrot juice outside without refrigeration is a recipe for spore formation. Treatment. A, B, C is first. A stands for airway. You maintain the airway first. And then we're talking about toxin. So try to neutralize the toxin by giving an antitoxin. And then get rid of the bacteria, which will prevent the formation of future toxin, by gastric lavage to get rid of the bacteria in your gut and antibiotics to kill the bacteria and prevent the formation of future toxins. These antibiotics include metronidazole and penicillin. If you have watched my previous video, you will recall that these are the two antibiotics that were also used for Clostridium tetany because both are members of the Clostridia family. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. In cases of wound botulism, we'll need surgical debridement. Let's review the use of antitoxins. If we're talking foodborne botulism, give me the horse-derived serum heptavalent botulism antitoxin. If we're talking infant botulism, give me the intravenous human-derived botulism immune globulin. As I've told you in the previous video, we tried to give you something bigger than you. If you're an infant, we give you a human-derived botulism immune globulin. But if you are an adult human, we will give you something bigger than you. Horse-derived 
antitoxin. How about wound botulism? You need antitoxin, you need surgical debridement, and in cases of secondary bacteria infections, you will need antibiotics. Let's compare among foodborne botulism, infant botulism, and wound botulism with regards to diagnosis and treatment. Diagnosis of foodborne botulism, just identify the toxin. Can I culture it? Nope. Not if you're practical. Infant botulism, identify the toxin and culture the sample. Where's the sample? The stool is your sample. Wound botulism, identify the toxin and culture the wound. That's your sample. But hey, medicosis, what if the sample is contaminated with other bacteria? What should I do? Heat it a little, not too much, just a little, to get rid of other competing bacteria. Treatment-wise, foodborne botulism, horse-derived antitoxin and gastric decontamination. Infant botulism, IV human-derived botulism, immunoglobulin, and gastric decontamination. Wound botulism, you need the antitoxin, you will need antibiotics, maybe, and not gastric decontamination, but surgical debridement, because the organism and the toxin is in the wound. Let's review Clostridium botulinum from Bicmonic. Clostridium botulinum, look at the bottles. It's a bacillus, here is the rod. Anaerobe, ant in a robe. Gram positive, here is the angel. We are talking about heat labile neurotoxin. Here is a heat labile toxin. You can get exposed to it by spores in the honey or improperly canned food. The toxin inhibits the release of acetylcholine, a seagull cola, at the neuromuscular junction. Symptoms include floppy baby syndrome, descending flaccid paralysis, ptosis, diplopia, and constipation. If you liked this video, you will enjoy my antibiotics course, which you can download at medicosisperfectionated.com to learn about penicillin, metronidazole, all the antibiotics, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications. I also happen to have a surgery high yields course and an emergency medicine high yields course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.